I'm Rishika Das Roy. I'm from India and I work in climate change. The past 10 days, the definite highlight has been the parliament. It is absolutely astounding to walk through those doors and the feeling you get about a place and what it represents. The sense and the ideals of democracy that's ingrained within it. We've just made it to the parliament and this is day one and we're super excited. My daily job is actually not about chasing polar bears or hanging out with Leonardo DiCaprio at fancy conferences, but climate change policy is small, imperceptible steps that can lead up to quite a large impact. When I was younger, I wanted to be an Egyptologist, and I was obsessed with Egyptian archaeology, and then I wanted to be a marine biologist. I studied uh, political science and international relations, and that sort of brought all of the policy linkages and the activism together. So it's actually been a journey and not just one decision. And so I started working on climate change when I was 17, specifically in the island of Sundarbans. I was far more idealistic then and I thought that saving a part of the world would be good enough. But as you sort of delve deeper into the issue, you realize that governments, people, countries, continents all need to come together because it is a cross-boundary issue. It's been slightly difficult because the gains aren't very tangible. So even in terms of public consciousness, it's easier to get momentum on, say, gender equality. And that's partially because of the way we communicate climate change. It's always through a scientific narrative or the discourse doesn't really humanize people. So very recently, we've started talking about climate survivors or climate actors. And the more we do to humanize it, we'll see that connection come through. We just got back from the session with the elders and needless to say it was one of the most inspiring events of my life. All of the elders knew somehow what we were trying to do even though they didn't know us individually they knew, knew us collectively what as a cohort we represented and that feeling that they wanted to talk to us was very leveling and that instills confidence that you just can't take away. So I think the best thing is that we came up with a policy framework of what leadership looks like. Inclusivity, respect, resilience. And I feel that every person I've met actually embodies these qualities. I had sort of an epiphany when I realized that, hey, everything we want in future leadership are qualities that all of us sort of have a base for so we can use going forward. So that was quite powerful. The first thing that I'm going to do once I get back home is to sort of garner organizational support because it's very important that the people you work with, so the stakeholders, the partners, your own employer understands what you're trying to do. And without that alignment and without that support, I'm not going to get anywhere.